Hey everyone, welcome to our first ever online Christmas Eve service at The Heart. Thank you for joining us. We're really glad that you're here. My name is Graham and this is my favorite Christmas sweater, my only Christmas sweater to be fair, but I'm wearing it to enter into the spirit of the season, but also to prove to the staff who always make fun of me for only wearing blues and grays and colors along that line, which is fair enough, I do. But clearly I own at least one bright red sweater and here it is, but Merry Christmas. We've almost made it to the end of this crazy 2020 year. We're only about a week away. I hope that you are experiencing a lot of joy in your home today and that you will tomorrow, even if this holiday looks a little bit different than you might have expected it to look. It's still really a gift to join together and to celebrate the birth of our Savior again. I want to read the account of Christ's birth from the Gospel of Luke in the Bible, but before I do that, let me extend just a really heartfelt thanks on behalf of all the staff to each and every one of you for the ways that you have walked alongside us this year and the ways that you have been with one another. You've shown up as the hands and feet of Christ. You have been agents of peace and calm in the midst of what at times felt like a never ending storm. We're so thankful for you and we love you deeply and we're excited to step into 2021 together as a church family and to see what God has in store for us. So thank you. Let me read from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's pray together. God, we continue to be in awe of the way that you poured out your love for us by sending your Son, that we could be reconciled to you. And we stand in awe of the truth of Emmanuel, God with us. We're we're amazed by the fact that you are present with us. And God, would you help us as we close out one year and step into another, would you help us to be so attentive to your presence? Would you help us to be so aware of your leading and your guiding? And as we celebrate 
over these next couple of days. And as we remember together again this part of the story, this birth that changed the whole world, would you continue to work in us and shape us into the kinds of people that can be a part of your kingdom coming in the world, can be a part of demonstrating the love of Christ to others. God, we welcome you even now into this service and into this time. We know that you're here. Thank you for the gift of your son, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Jason. Merry Christmas. Over the last couple of months, we have been focusing on the almond symbol. It is one of the most ancient sacred symbols in the world, and the symbol comes from the overlap of two circles. So think Venn diagram. And this overlap creates an almond shape, and it represents when two seemingly opposing themes touch or overlap or become one, where there's union between the two, union between the two that maybe didn't seem possible. And for Christmas, I thought it would be appropriate for our sacred overlap to be the, the overlap of these two seemingly opposing themes of giving and receiving. They're opposite, right? Giving and receiving are very opposite of each other, but there's something 
connected, right? You're, you're, there's a connection with the other one way or another. But in the midst of this holiday season, I hope that you are safe, that you are healthy, that you are warm. And I just want to share just one little snippet of something that Jesus said. It's from Matthew 10, 8. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. And in my mind, even though this theme could be discussed forever, and there are so many passages and so many conversations and examples we could have of where there's this touch of the overlap of giving and receiving. But just as a quick little Christmas symbol, I think the overlap is this posture. And so if you would, would you open your hands like this? Maybe if you have more space, open them wider. Or if you're really brave or you're by yourself, and you know, maybe you could open them all the way. The, oh, I think the overlap of giving and receiving is open hands, a posture of openness. Our hands, quite literally, but also obviously symbolically, being open. When you open your hands, you can give. When you open your hands, you can receive. And then, of course, it's a lot harder to do so with your hands or trying to grip onto something. Have you ever liked something so much that you thought you were going to give it to someone as a gift and then you ended up keeping it because you just liked it so much? When you release it, there's, there's a freedom there, right? There's, it's such a great feeling. So let me ask you, which one is your favorite? Giving or receiving? Now, if you're super humble and loving, and you, you answered giving, of course. But it's a great feeling to open up a present and receive it too, right? I, I think it's because they're connected. When your hands are open and when the other person's hands are open, then there's a lot of gray area of the feeling, right? You love the feeling of giving because you know that it might make them happy. And then when they open that gift and there's joy on their face, it gives you joy. But then, of course, the other way, if you open your hands, you give them the opportunity to feel that same thing that you felt when you gave. When you open a gift and you experience joy, you're not just happy because of the gift, you're happy because you know that your happiness is making them happy because they gave it to you. There's joy in giving. There's joy in receiving. And so, my sisters and my brothers, may you experience a posture of open hands. If you've been gripping on for a very long time, realize that there's so much stress and tension in that. And if you just relax and open your hands, the scripture says God opens his hands and satisfies the desires of every living thing. So this holiday season, may we be like the God who made us. We are made in God's image, after all, to be like the one who made us. May we open our hands and bring satisfaction to those around us. May we experience the joy of giving and may we experience the joy of receiving. Let's open our hands and have this posture so that this overlap can have union. Oh, ho, ho. Merry Christmas.
can all say that this has been a year unlike any other we have experienced and it can feel really difficult this time of year when we start thinking about all the things that we're missing out on perhaps and wishing that we could be with one another and we can't be and I know that there can be a lot of emotions that go along with that and yet at the same time this season is a time where we can stop and we can reflect and we can think about and remember all of the wonderful traditions that we have, all of the things that we hold dear. And even if we're not able to celebrate them as much as we would like, we're in the fashion that we would like this year, we can still think back on many fond memories. I know for me, traditionally, this is the time of year when we would trek out to Minnesota to visit family. We would brave the snow and the cold to be with people that we love and oftentimes on christmas eve in particular we would get together my family my wife emily my two daughters ella and ruby we would get together with my parents and my sister and we would have a christmas eve celebration together we would get together for dinner we'd have a really special meal together we would then have um, gifts by the fire open gifts by the fire really enjoy that time together and then we would go out and we would enjoy a candlelight service at the church where i grew up and so it was a really special time a really holy time something i have many great memories of and something that i've enjoyed many many years and one thing i remember in particular i would steal away for an hour or so to take a walk in between the the gift, the gift giving and the, and the candlelight service. And I would head out into the cold and the snow and the ice and I would take a walk by myself. And there was just something about that environment that would remind me of how alive I am. There's something about that cold air as I breathe it in and breathe it out that reminds me that every breath is a gift and that every breath is a reminder of life itself. And I know too that I would walk around and there would be this snowpack on the ground. And for those of you who have experienced that, you know that it creates two really unique um, environments or two really unique aspects in an environment. One is that it creates this interesting insulation where seemingly you could be in the middle of a a busy street or a busy neighborhood or you know whatever it might be but there was this kind of um, quieting of all of that sound because i think because of that snowpack that would really kind of deaden a lot of that extraneous noise and so you could really be walking and completely kind of immersed in your thoughts being fully present in that experience the other thing that's really unique too is that that snowpack would become reflective if the moon was out and it was full and it was sitting just right in the sky that light that's reflected off the moon would then be reflected off of the snow and it would create this sense of light even in the midst of darkness that was all around me and so it's not hard to then think about god and to think about his presence in that moment and to be reminded of the fact that he very much is present in the darkness. And I oftentimes would take those walks and I would feel more close to God than perhaps at any other point during the calendar year. That time with him was precious and is precious. And it's something that I can do really at any point, I guess, but is something that is especially memorable on Christmas. And so I don't know where you're at this season. I don't know how you're feeling, what emotions might be flying around. Perhaps you feel that connection with God. Perhaps you feel he's very much present. Or perhaps you feel like he is nowhere to be found. And so I just wanted to take this time to remind all of us that Christmas is that time of year when we can remind ourselves and we can take every opportunity to um, just 
be reminded that God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And so I wanted to read this prayer over us this evening. And, and I wanted the words to just really sink in for you, to have you allow them to really penetrate your hearts and your minds and to feel a sense of peace and joy and hope, all of the things that we have been looking forward to with the arrival of Christ. So let me read this over us. God who stays. It is difficult to believe that there is love in your silence. We have been conditioned by a world which tends to use its voice on behalf of the powerful and ignore the marginalized. So when we hear silence from you, it can feel like abandonment. Keep us from believing the lie that you have left us. Restore our experiences of silence, that it might be a space of rest and healing for us. That we would know that the presence of God is not confined to sound or silence, but that the Holy Good dwells within both in unique ways. And as we're tempted to believe our faith is impoverished for not always hearing you, help us to experience an intimacy and tenderness that is, is in the holy quiet of you, that we would believe in a kind of silence that isn't punishment or neglect, but a presence that is so close to our pain, you refuse to rush to words when what we most need is space to be still and heal. Amen. So blessings to you this Christmas. Blessings to you as you try your very best to come together with loved ones and to celebrate this time of God coming to earth and us being reminded of what a special and amazing gift that is. And I hope that this Christmas is one to remember for all the right reasons. So blessings to you and I look forward to when we can be face to face again. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and never pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn for Praise His holy name, Christ.
What is the name of this book? Silent Night. Silent Night. Uh, have we ever had a silent night in our house? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. These are the words of the song that we like to sing, Silent Night. Silent Night, holy night, all is calm. All is <laughs> Silent Night, illustrated by Laura Hawthorne. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright. Name one thing you see. Uh, I see um, them walking to Bethlehem. Round yon virgin, mother and child. Do you see? Do you see the pregnant lady? Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? Mary. Mary. Mm-hmm. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. What's the baby's name? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. What do they see? Angel. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. Would you be afraid if you saw an yeah. angel? Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Ah, angel. Glories stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. There is one, two, three, four, five, five angels. Do you know why they're singing, guys? Uh, Jesus is born. They have good news that Jesus is born. That's right. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. What's this? This Christ is a word for someone who's a king that's going to save them, the Messiah. Silent night, holy night, Son of God loves pure light. Do you know the name of these guys? Uh, king. Yeah, they're kings. Some call them wise men. Some call them magi. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, guys, is the light of the world. Jesus, Lord at thy birth. Jesus, Lord at thy birth. Augustine, what did the Magi bring to Jesus? Gold. Uh huh. Myrrh. Yeah. Frankincense. That's right. Good, good, good. Yeah. Gold because he was king. Frankincense because he was God. And myrrh because he was man. Somehow Jesus is all of those things. Silent night, holy night, 
All is calm, all is bright. I think that cheetah wouldn't live in Bath. Bath I, I don't know that cheetahs lived in this And area. a pelican? And a, what is a pelican? I thought, che- I thought a cheetah would eat a, a smaller animal. In the Bible, they talk about Jesus and the kind of peace he brings. Even a lion and a lamb might lay down together. So I think the artist is trying to show that. Oh, so a cheetah and a bird would be together? It's conveying the kind of peace that Jesus brings. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. Sleep and heavenly peace, sleep and heavenly peace. Do you guys want to say anything to the kids or the families at the heart? Um, Do you want to say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's we'll say it all together. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Alright, say bye guys. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.